So the directrix is going to be y is equal to minus p. Okay. So this one, it has to open left or right. This one open up or down. So the same, if it's y minus k squared is equal to 4p x minus h, it remains on the x axis. Um, and then the focus is going to be H plus P comma K and directrix, it will be X is equal to H minus P. The opening doesn't change. The other one, if it's x minus h squared is equal to four p y minus k. Okay, that's y axis, meaning the opening. And then focus, it's going to be h k plus p. And then directrix uh, y is equal to k minus p. Like that. So that's for the parabola. Um, let me bring in one for the for the ellipse. That's for the parabola then for the ellipse. Um, for the ellipse, we only have two forms. So we have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equal to one. We also have y squared over a squared plus x squared over b squared equal to one. And then from this one, we have, um, maybe here what would be important is, just to mention the focus, that it will be, it will be plus or minus C comma zero. And for this one, it will be zero comma plus or minus C. And then here, always C squared is A squared minus B squared. Uh, the same thing happens here. Like that. Then maybe if we have this type, x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k r squared over b squared equal to one, then we'll have the interest is in the focus. So the foci is going to be H plus or minus C comma K. So that it, if it's C, if it's here, uh, Y minus K squared over A squared plus X minus H squared 
over b squared is equal to one, then the foci is going to be uh, h. Where is the foci? It will be h comma k plus or minus c. I think other things are okay. Um, maybe here you need to mention about the vexes. I'll mention the ones on the uh, major axis. When when there's um a translation, so the major axis is going to be h comma k plus or minus a. Uh -uh. I'll them. So this will be H plus or minus A comma K. And then for the other one, that's where we have H comma K plus or minus A, like that. Okay. And then on the next one, I want us to talk to also list down for the hyperbola. What are the key most things here? So we have two. The first one, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to one. Um, and just here, we talk about x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to one. And also y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equal to one, and then y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared is equal to one. So those are the four that we expect. And what's, uh, what are the properties? Mm. Maybe I'll go straight to the foci. So the foci here, plus or minus c comma zero. And also the asymptotes. That is y is equal to plus or minus b over a x. And for the other one, here, the foci is uh, 0, comma plus or minus c. And then directrix plus or minus a over bx, like that. Then for the translated ones, uh, the focus, other things not much, the focus is going to be H plus or minus C comma K, and then asymptotes, asymptotes, that's where I have much interest. This is y is equal to a plus or minus b over a x minus h plus k. And then here, the same foci h comma k plus or minus c and then y is equal to plus or minus a over b. 
uh, x minus h plus k. Okay. Um, the vertices is not a problem. So this is what is required in summary for you to answer a good number of questions that are on ellipse, parabola, and hyperbola. So now I open the tutorial sheet. Um, I'm going to rush it. So let's pick examples from here. Um, examples. Example number one will come from question question four part A x is equal to minus three y squared. So every time I have an ellipse, I must know which category it falls. So where do we find this type of an ellipse? I mean, this type of uh, a parabola, because we know now it's a parabola because only one of the two variables is squared. So we must rearrange. So we divide by minus three, divide by minus three. So it will be y squared, is equal to negative one over three x. Meaning that uh, 4p is equal to minus one over three. And so p is equal to minus one over three divided by four, which is equal to minus one over 12, okay? So this one we say it opens to the right or to the left. It opens to the left if it is negative, to the right if it is positive. So now we know it's opening to the left. So now we know it's opening to the left. And because it's y squared is equal to minus one over three X, it means that the vertex is at zero comma zero. So it'll be like that. And then this should be the focus, which is P comma zero. So it will be negative one over 12 comma zero. And then the directrix. Remember, the directrix is x is equal to minus p. So in this case, we get x is equal to minus, our p is minus 1 over 12. So that we get x is equal to positive 1 over 12. And so everything is settled like that. So we have the focus, we have the vertex. We have the directrix. Mm -hmm. We go to B uh, of the same question four. B has 
two x squared plus y squared is equal to four. So we divide by four, we divide by four, we divide by four. We do this if the coefficients of x squared and y squared are not equal. So we'll have x squared over two plus y squared over four is equal to one. That's what we get. And so, remember, there was this condition uh, here. This is the, the ellipse. When we are saying C, when we are saying C is equal to A squared minus B squared, there's a condition that A is the one that is bigger than the other. Okay. Because there's a plus, because there's a plus, it's difficult to know whether it's y squared over a squared or it's x squared over, over a squared. But how we know is we look at the bigger denominator. So the bigger denominator is what becomes our, our a. So in this case, we have our a squared to be equal to 4 meaning that A is two. And so B squared is equal to two, so that our C squared will be A squared minus B squared, which is four minus two, and we get two. So C is plus or minus root two. So that our focus is then, um, so this is on the y. So it means that the focus is going to be zero, comma, uh, zero comma plus or minus the root of two. And then we have the sketch. So once I have the focus, then I can easily sketch. Like that. Okay, so an ellipse, it's opening just like this. So it's like that. So this is the focus, root two and minus root two. And then the center, 0, 0, So on the sides, uh, first on top, we say there's a 2. So down it will be minus 2. Remember, these are the A values, since we said A is 2. And so B, since B squared is 2, it means that B is equal to the root of 2. So we'll have root 2. we we'll also have negative root 2. So that's uh, how we get the. That's how we get the. The ellipse. So how I know whether it's elongated on which axis? I look at the bigger number. Okay, another example. So now we're picking. C. X squared minus Y squared is equal to one. This means that A squared is equal to one, and B squared is equal to one. So C squared for this, it's A squared plus B squared. So it's one plus one, which is two. So C is plus or minus the root of two. And so, we are going to have the sketch. For what? 
for a hyperbola. So the vectors, uh, this one has the center, 0, 0. And then A is 1. So at negative 1 and that positive 1, we have the vectors. So it's on the x, but because the y part has a negative. This is what we have. And then the reason why we found C is so that we can know the, the focus. So this is minus root two and plus root two. So one more important thing for the hyperbola is that we must have the asymptotes. Which we said so which we said we have what? We have um y is equal to when it's opening on the x-axis, when it's opening on the x-axis, so y is equal to plus or minus b over x. So y is equal to plus or minus b over x. I mean b over a x. So meaning y is equal to plus or minus b is one, a is one. So we get x. So we have this line. Or this line. So this is y is equal to minus x. This is y is equal to x. Okay. So these, these types that we have done, they were a bit easy. So let's go to question five, which is our second example here. Question five A, x squared plus eight y, minus 6x plus 13 is equal to zero. So when you look at the, the question, the first thing that you check is how many variables are squared? So only x variable is squared, y is not. So you know that, oh, I'm dealing with a parabola. So I complete the square for the one which is squared. So it's x squared minus 6x plus 8y plus 18 is 0. So from that, we complete the square for x. So we have x minus, we divide 6 by 3, I mean 6 by 2. You always get the half of the coefficient of x. So get 3 and then square. And then everything else we take the other side. So we have minus 8y minus 13, then plus. This number which we squared, I mean, which we brought inside here, we must square to this side. Remember how we complete the square? So this will be x minus 3 squared is equal to minus 8y minus 4. So that would be minus 13 plus 9, which is minus 4. And then the standard form, 
it requires that y is on its own. So we fact out minus eight and remain with y plus one over two. So that now we can look for our four p. Our four p is equal to minus eight, meaning that p is minus two. So if p is minus two, then it's facing where? To the left. I mean, it's facing down since x is one which is squared. So it's facing down. So now we go and check if it's facing down, how do we get the focus? Okay, how do we get the focus for this type of a parabola? So let's go, we check, that's why I wrote them down. So it's which type? The fourth line, this one. So we have the focus is H comma K plus P. H comma K plus P. And the directrix is going to be Y is equal to K minus P. Okay, K minus P. So now, what is our H comma K? Our H comma K, H comes from here. So that will be three comma minus half. Since uh, K comes from here. And so when you go to the focus, we'll have three comma minus half minus two, since we wanted to say plus negative two. And then the directrix is going to be minus half minus minus two. So which is minus half plus two, which is equal to three over two. And then this side, three comma minus five over over two. And then we can now have the sketch. So we have the vertex at three comma minus half here. And then we have uh, the focus minus five over two here. So this is going to go this way. So it will go this way. Okay. And then the directrix will be up there. Since it's y, uh, this is y is equal to three over two. So this is three over two. Like that. So that's how you, that's how you do things. So you must erase on how to complete the square. After that, those formulas like for the vertex, the focus directrix, those are key things. Because whenever there's a translation, you get to, sometimes you get confused like, do I add to H or I add to K? So you must have, you must know that if, if it's facing down, then it means that the focus will be inside. So for it to be inside, it means that the, the, the coordinate for X will remain fixed. What will move are the coordinates for Y. So to what moves is where you add or subtract. So I always add 
to get the focus and subtract to get the directrix. Well, the directrix is not inside the focus, and that's why we subtract. The focus is inside the, the parabola. That's why we, we add. Okay, let's go to part B. Part B is 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 28x plus 12y is equal to minus 140. So if I divide by two throughout, I'm getting x squared minus 14x plus y squared plus 6y is equal to minus 57. And then we complete the square for x and also for y. So we have x minus seven squared plus y plus three squared. And then we square those as we add them. So seven squared, that's 49, three squared, that's nine. So we we'll get x minus seven squared plus y plus Three squared is equal to 49, 49, uh, 57, that's eight, that's negative eight. Negative eight plus nine, that's one. Yeah, so it means that what looked like an ellipse has turned out to be a circle. So how do I know if it's an ellipse or it's a circle? I look at the coefficients of x and y. So the coefficient there is one for the bracket, for the first bracket, and it's the same one for the second bracket. So it means that for it's a circle. So now we just get h comma k, which is seven comma minus three, and then radius one, meaning that arrow is equal to one. So we can have this sketch. So that will be seven comma negative three here. So it will be a circle around this place. It's a small circle since the radius is one. So it's not touching any axis. Okay, unless there are any questions. Tomorrow we'll continue um, to answer question five, six, seven. I think we should do five, six, seven 
one, two, and three. Before you can start looking at the eccentricity part. Yeah. So we're not missing any class, so make sure that every day you attend the class. That we keep moving to A. So this will be enough for today. Bye bye. Bye, good night.